Dave Siffrey, and I'm informing in Formula. Hi, Dave. Thanks so much for being with us here today at DLD, where you made a news announcement. Can you tell us about it? Absolutely. So uh, my new company, which is called Offbeat Guides, which launched in November of last year, just had our the first major announcement since the launch. We actually just rolled out a brand new affiliate program for travel books. So if anybody actually wants to be able to create personalized on-demand travel guides, you're involved in travel, you're involved in, you know, your travel agent or your destination, or, you know, you want to just be able to help people learn more about your city where you live, you can do it now, and actually you'll get paid every time that someone buys an offbeat guide when they're referred from you. And in addition to that, what we've done is uh, we also launched with seven pretty large partners, everything ranging from uh, Ledger Holidays, which is the largest bus coach company in the United Kingdom, to the folks over at Doppler, where if you use their, if you use Doppler's trip planning service, you can actually now get an offbeat guide built on demand with one click, with all of the information from your Doppler profile. The people who use Doppler tend to be digitally savvy. People who take the British coach service, perhaps a bit less. So how does it work with them? Yeah, absolutely. And in fact, I think what, what I love about this company and what we've seen so far is, you know, the need to be able to have really high quality, really current available information when you're traveling cuts across all demographics, it cuts across all income classes, it cuts across all levels of technology sophistication. So even though, you know, for example, the folks at Ledger, which tend to be a little bit of an older group, people who want to be, they want to have managed travel, they want somebody to take care of them, tell them, you know, we get on the bus here and here's where we end up, that these folks love having books where they can read about where they're going to go next, they can see what are the restaurants that are there in the city, the choices that they have, the, you know, and, and so on, the, the history of the places that they're going to. But they also get a beautiful memento of their trip when they're done with their name on it, with the dates of their trip on it that they can then show to people, you know, when they come back. And what we also find is, you know, say you're, you're, a, travel, you're a Doppler traveler, so you're doing 100,000 miles a year, you may not have the time to go and plan all of this stuff out and three months in advance sit down and think through where do I want to go? What are the museum openings that are happening in the city that I'm traveling to? Are there any interesting bands? Or who are my friends that are there? And instead, if you could say, hey, you know what? Just make sure that there's an offbeat guide that's going to show up at my door three days before I leave for my trip and I'm done. Boy, what a great convenience for me. It doesn't cost, you know, in terms of cost, it's just $24.95 to get the book plus shipping. Or, oh my gosh, it's a last minute thing, i got to fly to San Antonio and I don't know what to do there, right? It's just, you get the PDF, $9.95, it's delivered right to you, immediate gratification. And so, everybody ranging from the person who travels once a year, and they want to make sure that it's all taken care of and it's planned out in advance for them, to the people who are the sophisticated business travelers who are saying, it's Tuesday, what time zone am I in? Right? The offbeat guides work really well for them. Great. So what can we expect next? Wow. Um, so first off, we're just kind of handling all of the incoming right now. It's, it's been exciting. So today, and we just launched this at 9 a.m. here uh, in Munich, and already I have hundreds of new affiliates who have joined up because they heard about what was happening here at DLD and there was some press pickup. And so literally, I think we're going to be spending a bunch of time just listening to them and what they want and how we can better serve them. Um, and we've seen also a lot of interest right now from the event and meeting organizers, this community of people who are building events who want to be able to have, wow, you know what, I want something that I can leave as a take home, but it's also useful because I can put the agenda in there, right, I can have all of the information tuned and tailored for each specific person who's coming to my event, but then it's also something that they want to take home. Right, so that sponsors will want to pay for it because it's not just something that you throw away at the end of your trip. Um, and what we're looking at also from core functionality are questions around, gee, how can we build guides that are even more attuned to, for example, multi-segment trips? 
right? Because sometimes I'm going to be going to Munich, and then I'm going to be going to Davos, and then I'm going to be going to Tel Aviv, and then I'm going to be coming home. Or if you're like Martin Varsovsky, you'll have breakfast in Marrakesh, lunch in <laughs> Munich, and, uh, lunch in Bar um, Madrid, and dinner in, uh, in uh, Munich. That's right. That's right. Well, and so, well, you know, it, this is not from our, this is from our teen's assistant. <laughs> <laughs> Who ordinarily would have to spend hours and hours on end figuring all of this stuff out and then printing everything out and handing you all of these printed pieces of paper with a big black clippy on the end, right, that will tell him, here's where you go and here's the hotel you're staying in and here's the driver who's going to be picking you up and all of that information. Wouldn't it be great if you could get that all organized and done in literally seconds instead of you having to take all of the time and pulling it all together yourself. Final question, what have you learned so far about the intersection between the digital and the paper worlds? Yeah. Um, you know, there was a lot of skepticism about whether this could work. Um, what do you, what's your thinking on this now? Yeah, no, it's a great question. I mean, you know, coming from the world of total frictionlessness, where, you know, it's all about just increasing the number of social connections that you have, or writing blog posts and seeing them getting picked up, and, you know, also watching them turn into ephemera, right? And seeing what you think is going to be a major impact dissipates into nothing. What I found is very interesting to me is, I mean, as a human being, we need the tangible. Right, there is something about the physical that just turns something in our animal brain. Um, and, I, and, and so there's, there's two aspects to this that I, re that I really think are, are interesting. The first is, paper is a technology that's been around for 4,000 years, okay? And it's got an enormous number of uses. And, and this is not to say, and I'm a huge believer, by the way, that in the next five to ten years, a whole bunch of us are all going to have, like, the implants in the back of our necks and, you know, internet connectivity, and you just go like this, and, you know, you're like, you know, okay, I'm tuning into Google Earth, or, you know, you push the button, you say, you know, pizza, right? And, it, you know, it comes in a little heads-up display, like, we'll have that, right? And I'm going to be first in line. But you know what? It's not going to be the case for my mom. It's not going to be the case for, you know, for my sister or for my wife or for, you know, for my dad, right? And they're all smart people, but they aren't as much of an early adopter of technologies as I am. And what started me thinking is everybody gets down on, tech, on paper, and I think what they're mistaking is they're getting down on this thing that is based around a mass-produced very, you know, very uh, sort of volume type of business where you're taking yesterday's news, you're pushing it onto, you know, ink, and then you're pushing it through the streets to every, everybody gets the same thing. And I think that, you know what, that's not a terribly bright future. But if instead you start looking at paper in a different way and you start saying, you know what, this is interesting, you know what, it's color in black and white. It's very high resolution, right? You say, look, flexible display. <laughs> well, I don't even have that on my laptop, right? You know, you go, huh, it's very low power, right? I mean, where's the batteries for this thing? I'm not, I'm not sure. Or, or you say, gosh, you know what? It's actually water resistant, right? Like, I can drop this in water and not have to send it back to tech support. And if I get this special stylus called a pen, right, I can even make it into a read-write medium, not just a read-only medium. And, and so, so I think what's really interesting here is understanding what these kinds of technologies are still extraordinarily good at, and they're low cost. Like when I go to Thailand and I'm sitting on a beach in Koh Samui, I do not want to leave my iPhone in my sandals, right? When I'm going up and, you know, I'm in Paris and, and I got to turn on that data plan, like I actually have to think now before I go, otherwise I end up with a $7,000 phone bill. No, 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 no. Right? Like, let's use the technologies that are really right for the job. And what I really thought about this was, I said, you know, it's not, and it's not just about paper. Right? Paper is great, but I'm not some, you know, Luddite here. Right? I just want to be able to get my information in every way that I want my information. Right? So give me my travel guide. I'm getting the convenience. I'm getting this great information from professionals and amateurs alike who are contributing back into it. Heck, I'm even helping you contribute back. But, you know, let me get it in paper if I wanted to get it in paper. Let me get it in HTML if I wanted in HTML. Let me get it on my mobile phone if I'm, if I'm using my mobile phone. 
but let me get it. Right. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you.